I am Yi Qing Yao from the Institute of Statistical Science, Academia Seneca. Originally, the director of my institute, Dr. Jing Ho Chen, was designated to chair the session. Due to time conflict with a meeting at Academia Seneca, he is not able to join the conference at this moment. So I'm here in his place. It's my great pleasure an honor to introduce the speaker, Professor An Zhao, Zhao Lianju Jiao So from National Tsinghua University. Professor Zhao has been with National Tsinghua University for over four decades as a faculty member. This is quite remarkable. Even more remarkable is the fact that she had undergraduate studies with the same university. So she has been with National Tsinghua University since 1969 for over half a century, except for a few years away in the U.S. for graduate studies at the University of Mich uh, Wisconsin and for visiting positions at the University of Michigan and Harvard. During her distinguished uh, career, Professor Zhao has received numerous awards and uh, honors, including Taiwan National Chair Professorship, one of the highest uh, academic honors offered by the government. Besides, Professor Zhao has supervised uh, more than 20 PhD students, many of whom are now senior professors with major universities in Taiwan. I'm sure Professor Zhao must be most proud of her students' performance. Before Professor Zhao's talk starts, let me remind the audience that during the talk, if you have any questions, please type your name and the questions, brief questions in the chat room. At the end of the talk, I will call your name and then you can turn on your microphone and ask questions. Thank you for your operation, cooperation. The title of title. Professor Zhao's talk is a review uh, of Professor Wenzhen Chen's statistical research marking the 40-year remembrance of his martyrdom. The NG, please. First, I thank Professor Yao for introducing me. And I thank our audience for joining this online talk to mark the 40 year remembrance of Professor Wen Chen Chen's martyrdom. I also thank the organizing committee for inviting me to review Chen's statistical research. Some background. In 1975, Wen Chen started his graduate study at the University of Michigan. Three years later, he obtained his PhD degree in statistics. During the 77 to 78 academic year, I first met Wen Chen while visiting the University of Michigan and had the, the honor of befriending him and following his research for a few short years. In 1981, one week before his death, I invited him to give a talk at the Institute of Applied Math at National Tsinghua University, where I worked, tragically and unexpectedly. That was the last talk he gave in his life. In that talk, he reviewed his principal research and mentioned some ongoing and future research topics. During the talk, he was brimming with confidence and promise in his blossoming academic career at Carnegie Mellon University. Today, in this memorial talk, I will repeat what he articulated in his last talk. Before Wen Chen's death, he had published six papers, all in leading journals. He was the leading author for five of them. The first paper, entitled On the Weak Form of Zeus Law, was based a part of Wen Chen's PhD thesis. In this paper, 
he proposed a multivariate polyar M model to interpret Sieff's law. And I will give some details later on. And his model is equivalent to symmetric Dirichlet multinomial M model. So in the second paper, he derived some local limit theorem for the Dirichlet multinomial M model. In the third paper, he extends uh, these limit theorems to a unified framework. Chen and his collaborators derived several optimal stopping rules under various sampling schemes for our models. One optimal stopping rule was published in the Annals of Probability with Norman Starr. That's paper four. And the paper five and the paper six represent his collaboration work with scholars in other disciplines. After his death, one paper on basing survival analysis was published in a conference proceeding. And one additional paper written by Professor Morris de Good on optimal search for new types was published as a book chapter. His paper on the infinite polyar M model was submitted but eventually not published. In his last talk, he also mentioned several papers under preparation. Among this, he extends the weak form of Sieff law to the strong form and also obtained more asymptotic normality result for Dirichlet multinomial models. He also derived some new invariant sequential test and proposed a novel class of optimal stopping problems. In addition, he also generalized the basic survival analysis to incorporate patients' covariate. From his publication, his specific research topics include the following probability models for Sieff's law, asymptotic theory of general size distribution under an integrated R model framework, and the optimal stopping rules in R model based on sequential analysis. Also, some applications of mathematical and statistical methods to other disciplines. Yes, from theoretical probability modeling to practical applications, he has made influential contributions of a spectrum of methodological and applied topics. I will repeat the first three topics as he did in his last talk 40 years ago. That is, I will introduce Sieff's law and the two equivalent models. I will call the Rachelet multinomial model just as DM model for short, and also multivariate polyar M model as polyar M model for short. I will also present asymptotic normality theorem and the optimal stopping times in these two R models. If time permit, I will briefly describe my own research inspired by Chen's work. And this is the paper based on part of his PhD thesis that was published in Journal of Applied Probability. Wen Chen was proud of his thesis. This can be seen from his letters to family. He said, My thesis was very well written. My advisor highly pressed. Ma, you, 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 指导教授结了几年结不出来的题目，我用一夜的时间就结出来的。Mom, you should be proud of me. I use one 
nine times to solve a problem that my advisor could not work out for years. Because his scissors was on Ziff's law, so I will briefly describe Ziff's law first. George Ziff was an American linguist and a philologist and also a pioneer in studies of word frequency. Actually, Ziff did not claim to have originated Ziff's law. He indicated that before him, the same law was also noted by a French stenographer and also a German physicist. Now, this law has been referred as Ziff's law because Ziff provided many examples and evidence in his book entitled Human Behavior and the Principle of Least Effort. This book was originally published in 1949, just one year before Ziff's death. And this, this one uh, is a reprinted, reprinted version in 2012. Ziff's original law says that for any tax corpus where the frequency is inversely proportional to its rank, here, rank one means the most frequently used word. Ziff's law implies that the second most frequent word occurs roughly half as often as the first, and the third most frequent word roughly one third as often as the first, and so on. For example, in the well known university, Brown University corpus, which is comprised of about 1 million words, and the rank 1 words is the word the, which is about 7%. And the second most frequent, that's the rank 2 word, is the word of, is about 3.5%, exactly half of 7%. And the rank 3 word is the word and, is about 2.9%. This is just slightly higher than one third of 7%. Under this law, only a few words are used very often. Most are used rarely. For example, in Broncopus, there are 50,000 vocabulary items. That means distinct words. Only about 130 used very often and to account for half of the brown corpus. Most are used rarely. As I, as I can recall, over 30,000 words only occur once. Ziff interpreted the law based on human behavior and the principle of least effort and gave extensive empirical evidence not only in linguistics, but also in many research fields. For example, description of the phenomena of population of cities, personal income, and the species of genera in taxonomy. Newman provided an updated list of examples. For example, website hit, magnitude of earthquakes, number of papers, number of citations of authors. Ziff's law has become a prevalent empirical rule in many disciplines, including linguistics, biology, computer science, economics, evolution, information science, social science, etc. If we would like to add the size, such as word frequency, population size, personal income, or number of species in general, and the letter R be rank. And all sizes are ranked from high to low. The rank one means the largest size. Ziff's law implied that the rank R times the corresponding size is a constant. Equivalently, the size is inversely proportional to the, its rank R. In this relationship, 
plot log SR with respect to log R is linear with slope minus one. This graph is taken from page 25 of this book. And this is the plot of log size or log frequency with respect to log rank. The curve A is for the writing of the writer James Joyce, the book Ulysses. And the second curve B is for the writing of the writer Eldridge. And the, and the, the ideal curve with slope minus one is this curve C. And this plot, these two plots exhibit a linear patterns with slope around the minus one. This actually extended his original form to a more general form to allow the slope to be a function of a parameter of alpha. That is, r times a power one over alpha times sr is a constant c. In this case, if we plot log sr with respect to log r as a linear with a slope one over alpha. Under this assumption, we will get PDF of size, that is the probability for size s follows a power law, that is the probability for size s is proportional to s to a power, to an active power. And for this power law implies that large sizes are extremely rare, small sizes are extremely common. For example, in taxonomy, this means only a few genera consist of many species. Most genera consist of one or two species. In this case, if we plot log number genera with respect to log number species, this will be a linear curve with slope minus one minus alpha. These are the two first published graphs demonstrating a power law or a Ziff's law. This paper was written by Willis and Euler about 100 years ago in Nature. This curve describes the pattern for the log number of genera with respect to log number of species. And we can see a linear, uh, roughly a linear curve. And also, this is for leaf beetles, also a linear curve. Wen Chen used this leaf beetles data in his paper for illustration. So I copied, copied his data in this slide. This is the relationship between species and the genera in taxonomy. So species S here denotes the size and the number of genera GS denotes the number of genera with size S. For this data that were collected 100 years ago consist of about 10,000 species. However, only a few genera consist of many species. For example, one genus consists of 681 species, and about two genera consist of around 400 species. Most of the general, yeah, about half of the general, consist only speci one species or two species. This data also illustrates my share of the research topic with Wen Chen. I also use similar data. Wen Chen's research was to establish probability model to describe the, the observed data, while my research was on estimating the number of undetected species. 
it is very interesting to notice that after 100 years, this family, the number of species is increased from 10,000 species to 37,000 species. Wen Chen also used this lizard's data. And I will discuss this later on. Many researchers have proposed various probability models to interpret the law. This can be traced back to your and Simon. Wen Chen's PhD thesis advisor, Bruce Hill, proposed two models, that is the classical occupancy model and both Einstein or model. Chen's PhD thesis was to extend the two models proposed by Bruce Hill to DM model. His model represents the most general approach that includes many previous models as special cases. So first I will describe the multivariate polio urn model. Suppose there are n urns named R1, M2 to Nn. Each urn originally contain beta balls. Both Einstein corresponds to beta this one. In step, in step one, one urn is selected randomly. So I use this example. So we have one ball in each urn before the selection. Suppose first we select urn two, then we add an additional ball to urn two. Then in step two, the second urn is selected with probability proportional to number of balls in it. For example, if we select urn M, then we add an additional ball to urn M. The selection process is repeated. Then after a selection, suppose urn K is selected AK times. Then given the value of A vector, the probability of the next selection is from urn J is proportional to the number of balls in urn J. So in this formula, in the denominator is the total number of balls and in the numerator is the number of balls in urn J. This is a property in urn models that the reach at richer, that means a urn with more balls will attract more additional balls if beta is finite. If beta, if beta is infinity, then this, this probability reduced to 1 over m. This corresponds to classical occupancy or maxima Boltzmann model. And when beta is 1, this corresponds to both Einstein model. And this R model is equivalent to DM model. In DM model setup, we have capital M balls are distributed among M urns based on the following allocation. That is, we let X LK be the number of balls in urn K. Here, we assume no empty urns because there we assume there is at least one species, for example, in any observed genus. Then this vector L minus one, it's the ball count in M urns. This is assumed to be a marginal with cell total, capital M minus M, and the width urn probability P. Here we have to minus one because no empty urns are allowed. When Chen further assumed that P follows a symmetric Dirichlet distribution with the following um, PDF. So this is like a prior in basing approach. They integrate out this prior, we get the PDF of ball count for any given m, n, and the beta, as in this expression. For both Einstein model, 
is reduced to this formula. And this formula, the denominator, represents the total number of outcomes if no empty arms are allowed. Notice in this both Einstein model, all outcomes are equally likely. And here, beta times to infinity, this PDF reduced to the conventional multinomial model with cell probability O1 over M. Why there are several scholars in physics involved in this model? Because in physics, they regarded the particles as balls and energy levels as arms. That's why both Einstein model and the Maxwell Boltzmann model are commonly used in physics. For the DM model, we can get the conditional PDF given the ball count. With the additional selection, the conditional probability of the additional selection, I say M plus one selection, is from earn J can be written as in this formula. And this formula corresponds to our previous multivariate polyarm model, just replace number of balls by capital M minus M and AJ by LJ minus one. In a special case of beta is one, then this conditional probability reduced to the proportion of ball count, proportion of ball count. Then in the classical occupancy model, this conditional probability reduced to one over M for regard, regardless of ball count. In Wenchen's derivation, the key step is that Wen Chen uh, wrote the ball count L, if L can be expressed as A plus one, A vector plus one, this can be as written as a conditional distribution of IID random variables of Xi's, given the total is capital M minus M. And this X1, X2 to Xm are IID negative binomial random variables with the following density. Under the condition that M and N tends to infinity, so that the ratio M over N tends to a constant theta between zero and one, the parameter of the negative binomial distribution can be expressed as a function of theta and the beta. Then we can show that the size distribution, that here is the GS, is the number size distribution refers to number of arms with exactly S balls. It's just like the number of genera with exactly S species. We can prove that when capital M over N tends to theta, GS over N tends to this negative, prob negative binomial probability, improbability, and here H beta theta is denotes the probability of negative binomial random variable. When beta is one, this reduced to geometric that Bruce Hill's result. When beta tends to infinity, this reduced to Poisson distribution. This is also was a result of a shell. Here, Wen Chen also assumed M number of arms is a random variable depending on M. As M tends to infinity, if the CDF of this ratio converge weakly to a distribution F theta, then the expected value of this GS over M tends to this integral. Your integral is this convergent CDF. When Chen considered two 
distributions. First, if f theta follows the formula as the power theta with power alpha, then the expected value of gs over m tends to this formula. When s is large, and this formula is proportional to s to a negative power. That's exactly the weak law for large s. Here, weak law refers to expectation of gs over m. Actually, Wen Chen generalizes this result to a strong form, that is, the behavior of the random variable gs over m itself converge in probability to this formula. He also consider another distribution with PDF as expressed in this formula. And he showed that expect, expectation of GS over M tends to a function called the phi of a beta S. And this phi function, when S is large, also proportional to S to a negative power. So here, when Chen proved under his VM model or Paulia M model, and this two distribution function, the size distribution GS over M will behave according to Ziff's weak law. Um, for this formula, if beta is one, they reduce to U's result and also Simon's result. Here, alpha and beta are unknown. So, Wen Chen obtained the estimate of alpha by a regression estimate for large S because of this relationship, and then plug in alpha estimate into likelihood of negative binomial probability, obtain a profile likelihood of beta, and then obtain a estimate of beta. Here are the fittings to laser data. And this are the original data. And this is the phi function derived by chain times m is the expected fitted value for each size s. Bruce Hill fitted both Einstein to this laser data. From the estimate of alpha beta in the M model, the, the estimate of alpha beta actually very close to those estimate based on both Einstein model. Therefore, nearly all fitting are quite close for these two models. But notice that for size S is one, chance the model produce substantial improvement over both Einstein model. Wen Chen also fit his DM model to leaf beta data and from the estimate of alpha beta we can see this model beta deviate from unit to some extent. Therefore, the fitting would be quite different. But here I also, here I just list the result for DM model because I cannot find the fitting for both Einstein model in the literature. And here you can see for size equals to one and two, DM model fit very well. Chen also performed thinness of test to indicate the fitting of DM is adequate. Now for the second topic is the limiting theorem for general size distribution. Here, GS is defined as the number of urns with exactly S forms. When Chen derived the limiting theorem 
for g for a k-dimensional size sizes that is for gs1 gs2 to gsk for classical urm model there are three approaches first is matter of moment second is reduction to conditional distribution to iid given total sum based on characteristic function and the third one is set of form method based on extended probability generating function. Here, set a point and then far, it's basically a generalized Laplace approximation. When Chen combined the second and third approach to prove limited theorems for DM models in this paper, Then in this paper, he extends the model to a unified framework that is for any ID case conditional on total sum. That is, in the R model, if we let L be the ball count to prove the synthetic normality, here the empty arms are allowed. So we just use all count in M arms. This unified framework says that the ball count has the same distribution as the conditional distribution of IID. And we have just seen that if Xi is negative binomial, is reduced to poly Urn model. If X is geometric, is reduced to both Einstein Urn model. And X is Poisson, then this is classical occupancy model. Because the extension to unified framework is generally parallel to those for polyar and model, I will just sketch the proof for polyar and model. The framework is we have ID and it are conditional on total observations. And each xi is distributed as a negative binomial distribution. In Wen Chen's derivation, he obtained the extended probability generating function as in this formula. And here I use intersection gsi to denote the joint probability of gsi equals to gi. This part is the usual definition of probability generating function for GSI. But here, when Chen includes a constant, it's just for convenience of derivation. Therefore, uh, in this, this code is extended because he also considered the generating function for this conditional variable n. Therefore, for this, extended the probability generating function, we have k plus one argument. When Chen obtained this generating function as expressed in this formula. And then he further derived the generating function for the special case that the GSI equals to zero as expressed in this formula. Then he expands the partial derivative of this extended probability generating function with respect to those zi's and letting zi equal to zero into powers of z and compare it with the special case of gsi equals to zero. So finally, he can express the joint probability of gsi equals to gi as product of three terms. The first term, sorry, the first term, sorry, the first term is the convenience term for derivation. And the second term and the third term are obtained as follows. We first partition all M's as two parts. 
the first part will pick up those arms with sources of interest, that is S1, S2 to SK, and they are assumed they are GI arms with SI balls. So the second term represents the probability for this part of arms. And then, but the other terms with other sizes, that is, there are M minus some GI urns and with M minus some GI times SI balls. Then the probability for this part of M is expressed in this term three. The given the condition, capital M over M tends to theta greater than zero, when change your starting formula to approximate the first term and the second term. And then use several point approximation to approximate the third term. Finally, you obtain the joint probability of this GSI tends to k dimensional normal distribution with mean vector m times mu vector and the various covariance matrix m times sigma. And the mean vector and the various covariance matrix can be elegantly expressed as function of negative binomial probabilities. So we let H as denote the probability of negative binomial and we simplify notation HS just as HSI, just as HI, then the mean, the element, the ice element of the mean vector is just M times HI. And the IJ element of this variance covariance matrix is M times sigma IJ. And the sigma IJ is expressed as in this formula. Here, delta IJ is one if for variance i equals to j and delta ij is zero for covariance. Then we can standardize this derivation to get joint asymptotic normality of this general size distribution times to k-dimensional multivariate normal PDF with mean vector zero and the various covariance matrix sigma. Wen Chen actually extended his asymptotic result to a very general infinite polio M model. Unfortunately, this paper was submitted but not published due to his death. So this is the front cover of his technical report, report he gave to me 40 years ago. And this is the abstract of this paper. Wen Chen told me that this model is his most favorite model. So I will extend, I will extend his model to this infinite polio model. That is given an infinite series lambda i with sum being one in stage one I selected with probability lambda i. Suppose n k is selected, then a ball is added to n k. Then the stage two, n k is selected with higher probability with lambda k plus one over two. The other arms probability becomes just half. So continue the selection to stage n. And we let number of balls in urn after n stage as this a vector, then in stash n plus one, urn i is selected with probability a i plus lambda i divided by n plus one. This infinite polio urn model will include all types of polio urn model on special cases. Moreover, when Chen Proof this model is equivalent to infinite cell multinomial distribution with Ferguson Dirichlet distribution as a prior. Here, 
Ferguson directional relative distribution is an infinite dimension extension of the relative distribution to infinite number of cells. Now we to the third topic on optimal stopping. And this is the paper with Norman Starr published in the Annals of Probability. When Chen started this research based on sequential analysis with Norman Starr when he was a graduate. But this paper was published after his graduation. Then he went to Carnegie Mellon University and worked with Morris de Groot on more stopping issues. And the paper here represents their collaboration. And this is on optimal search for new types. Here, Professor de Groot noted that we had begun working together on this topic before his death. The model represented here and some represented here and some of the results are based on either his ideas or our joint research. I have taken the liberty of listing his name as a co-author. Perhaps I have taken a greater liberty by making myself a co-author. In this paper, the approach can be connected to Alan Turing's concept of sample coverage, as will be discussed in later slides. And this approach has found wider applications in biodiversity sampling, an area that I have been working on. However, in the following presentation, I will use the framework developed in this paper by Rasmussen and Norman Starr, because this is on the framework of stopping time and searching for new species, which is very close to my research area. So in this case, I will formulate the following framework. That is, we assume there are S species in a community, S is unknown. Sorry, I double use the notation S, but in the following slides, S denotes unknown species richness, and that PI also unknown be the relative abundance or probability of species I in each individual selection. And the sampling was conducted sequentially, that is, each time we select an individual and noting species identity. Assume there is a cost to C1 unit for sampling each individual and a reward C2 unit for each newly discovered species. Then after sampling N individuals, we let us observe and denote the number of species that are discovered in N individuals. Then the payoff function is the reward minus the total cost for this function, Wn. In this setup, we let Xin be the number of times that species I discovered after N, indi N individuals are selected. Therefore, the vector of Xin follows a multinomial distribution with size n and the probability p1, p2 to ps. Here we need to define the sigma algebra generated by data available after individuals are selected. So, as usual, I define fn as the sigma algebra generated by those xim, m less than or equal to n. The optimal stopping time means that we will find a sample size t such that the payoff, the expected payoff function is maximized 
among old starving times. Wen Chen and his collaborator were based Charles Robbins and Sigma's great expectation theory, that is, the optimal stopping time, T optimal, is the first N such that the expected payoff of N plus one given sigma algebra Fn less than or equal to payoff of size N. Of course, there are some conditions that need to be satisfied. For example, one is the monotone case or monotone assumption, but we can show here this optimal stopping rule is equivalent to the sum of the probability of those undetected species is equal to or less than this ratio C1 over C2. And this formula is certainly monotone in N. That is, if it's valid for K, then it's of course valid for K plus one. And the adaptive rule, here we need an adaptive rule because S is unknown and probability of species are also unknown. It, surprisingly, adaptive rule is just the number of singletons in N individuals. Proportion of the singletons is less than or equal to this ratio. And here, the stopping criteria is exactly one minus sample coverage. And this concept of sample coverage was developed by Alan Turing. And the Alan Turing, here is the Turing's memorial stat plaque near Manchester. The description of Turing as father of computer science, mathematician, logician, wartime code breaker, and victim of prejudice. Turing never published his statistical work, but he gave permission to Jack Bird to publish it. So all the following results are based on the two books by Jack Bird. Turing was trying to describe the completeness of the code intercepted during war war time. In terms of biological context, it's equivalent to define CN as the total probability of the species discovered in the sample. So CN can be expressed as the sum PI for those, P, for those I discovered in sample. This can be better understood by 1 minus CN, that is our stopping criteria. This is the conditional on data probability discovering a new species if an additional observation were to be taken. So 1 minus, one minus sample coverage is our stopping criteria. Contrary to most people's intuition, Turing showed that sample coverage can be very accurately and efficiently estimated based on the sample itself. The estimate is just one minus proportion of singletons. Then for our criteria, it's just proportion of singletons in the sample. Here I use a very simple example to show why this is proportion of singletons. Suppose we have observed 10 birds, and out of this we have five sparrow, two pigeon, one kingfisher, one, China, one white eye, and one, one Taiwan bobbit. Suppose we can observe one additional observation. What is the probability we will see and new species, I mean new to the sample, for example, Formosa magpie. If this is a new species new to the sample, then this must be a singleton in an enlarged sample of size of 11. 
since the ordering is not relevant, so this conditional probability just reduces to the proportion of singleton in a enlarged size of 11. But actually, we don't observe this additional observation. So we just approximate it by the proportion of singletons in the sample of size n. Wen Chen's work has inspired it, inspired my research in many aspects. First aspect is about species richness estimation. Uh, I think I will slide, I will skip this slide because of time limit. I will just go to the second inspiration to me, that is the standardization of biodiversity samples. A fundamental issue in ecology is how to standardize biodiversity samples to compare data of different scales. Ecologists have long recognized that the observed diversity, for example, the observed species richness depends on sample size. So the empirical diversity or observed number of species cannot be directly compared. Standardization is required. Then the conventional standardization in ecology is to standardize sample size called the rarefaction technique. This has been used by ecology for 50 years since the paper by Sanders. We call in Wen Chen and collaborators from work their optimal stopping times to stop at the first sample size such that one minus sample coverage is less than this ratio. Under this optimal stopping time, we will get larger sample size for more diverse communities. So for example, in tropics, we will take more observation, but in boreal region, we will take less observations. Therefore, my idea was to standardize biodiversity sample to a fixed number of sample coverage based on Wen Chen and the collaborators' result. After 30 years, I finally published the theory with several ecologists. We proposed the standardization based on a fixed sample coverage rather than sample sizes because sample coverage, according to Turing's theory, is a characteristic estimated by data. And here, sample sizes are determined by sampler. And this also allows us to efficiently use all data to make a more robust and detailed inference about the sampled communities. I also generalized this coverage-based standardization to many dimensions of biodiversity indices. For example, species or taxonomy diversity, also phylogenetic diversity that incorporates species evolutionary history, also functional diversity that incorporates species trait. And recently, I also extend to network diversity, such as food web, the relationship between predators and priests, and also pollinators and the flowers, etc. Chen's paper has inspired the fruitful research in my biodiversity research for the past 40 years. However, for this 40 years, Zhanghai Wen Chen will not rest in peace until the truth of his death is finally revealed. 这是诗人李明勇在纪念陈文成博士
，你的身至少在空间之，哎，成为地理的视野啊，那惊叫划破夜暗的天空啊，那坠落，震动荆棘的土地，雀鸟听见那声音，星星看见那景象，那声音在岛屿的脉动里，那景象。在岛屿的纹路中，成为不会被遗忘的记忆，成为不能被遗弃的版图。文成曾经跟我说过，还有跟他的 family 说过，他看见台湾的山，他觉得是真正的山；看见台湾的水，他觉得是真正台湾的水。所以呢，最后我祈愿文成的魂魄徜徉在台湾的山川大地。Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. 感谢参与，感谢聆听。I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you for Thank you. Professor Zhao's excellent talk, summarizing Dr. Chen's important contributions in his short career, which are extend the some important classical results by well-known. Statisticians and the probabilists, and I wonder if the audience have any questions for Professor Zhao. Yes, the time has passed. Eleven forty. Any any questions comments? Okay, and finally, let me say a few words. Um, Professor. Oh, can I ask a question? Can I? Ah, can you speak Chinese? Yes, can you speak Chinese? Can you speak Chinese better? Okay. Okay. Ah, Zhao Professor, thank you very much. 真是把文成很 vivid 的带回我们面前，四十四十年前。我们同学说是五十年前了，文文成的那个哦，精神实在实在是很很怀念。我想请问你一个很小很很很小的一个问题，我我其实我我一直很 curious， 文成的那个论文里面他用的例子有一个例子是用的那个金花虫，对，犁犁头。我不知道你，因为你最呃呃，生物多样性。以前你跟他谈过，你你知不知道他呃用那个例子呃都是从哪里来的？我我看的 curious， 因为他是对台湾的山水是非常山川是非常热爱的。那金花虫在台湾是很很很很多的吧？所以我也不知道这个是不是跟他对台湾的土地的这个热爱有有。的 motivation 来的，是好，金花虫的啊资、呃、料呢，在这张 slide 上面。那啊、呃，其实呢，文成呢，哎、呃，我跟文成曾经啊、呃，当我在 Michigan 访问的时候，其实我跟他就有讨论到这个啊、呃、例题。那呃，这个啊、呃，呃，这个资料呢，哈，是从，哎，我这边可以叫出来哦，是从 Willis， 啊、呃，就是呃最早的这个 paper， 呃，在这边，这个其实是一百年前的 data。也就是一九二二年，从 Willis 跟 y o u 的啊、呃、这个 data， 所以文成的 data 呢、啊、是从这篇取出来的。那后来他又用了 Lisa 的 data， 对，所以啊这个 data 是一百年前的 data， 对。那当然现在已经 updated。多谢。好，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢你的问题。Okay, uh, let me just say a few words before we end this talk uh, session. The Professor Robert Chen, Chen Wenxian, is Dr. Chen's elder brother. And Robert has been with the University of Miami for years. Yeah, and, but he, he used to visit Taiwan every summer, but not for the last uh, several years because of his illness. And uh, oh. early last year, I sent him an email saying that a group of people were organizing a conference in memory of his younger brother. Although I didn't hear from him, probably because of his, his illness. 
I'm sure he must be most grateful to those who helped organize this conference. 陈文宪教授他每次回来台湾的时候呢我都有邀请他来清华访问那尤其是呢他也给演讲后来一阵子呢他就告诉我说他的身体不是很舒服所以近几年来我就没有再看见他了对他就没有回来台湾了应该这么